This is now loud. Jim, are you here? Oh, right here. Can you turn this up? It's a um, handheld mic, please. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't do a sound check. Um, welcome, everybody. Welcome to LA2M. Thanks for coming. It's high noon. We always start at noon, and uh, glad you're here. So, my name is Derek Maribon, CEO of Ingenix Digital Marketing. Check, check, check. It's the handheld one. Test, test, test. A little louder. I'll go a little higher. Yeah. Uh, check, 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 check. Test, test, test. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Um, so, anyway, it's Derek Maribon. We're in a company called Ingenix Digital Marketing, focused on lead generation and driving traffic uh, for people. And I tend to kick out these events. This is LA2M. It's a 501c3 nonprofit group. We meet every Wednesday. And Mary Lou just informed me we have 40, uh, 40 events throughout the year. That's a lot. That's a lot of meetings. So 40 meetings throughout the year. So thanks to everyone who came today. And uh, you're in for a treat. Great topic, great speaker. So uh, just some things real quick about LA2M. Is there anyone here for our first LA2M? First timers? OK, welcome, welcome, folks. Um, just so you know, LA2M, we are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we are on LinkedIn. So find us, follow us, join our group, join our group on LinkedIn, and uh, tell your friends. Um, we like to fill the room every week. It doesn't always happen, but we like to fill the room and make some more fun. So tell your friends, bring a friend, and come on out. We are here every Wednesday, except for certain holidays, and uh, it's a great program. So LA2M... Let's see, we're working on the intro. See, because Jim, 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 come up here for a minute. So Jim is our new board member and Jim Musial and sponsor chair. And uh, why don't I just let you talk to him and then I'll say whatever you don't say. All right, here's Jim. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out today. You know, we exist here uh, for a couple purposes. One is we love to share marketing ideas and marketing education with you. And that's part of the reason why you're here and why a lot of you come back each week. Plus, you get to network with some fantastic people and make some great business connections. But because of that, we are very fortunate to have some organizations who sponsor us. And uh, we're always looking for more sponsorship for our LA2M. But we have a couple sponsors that I want to recognize and discuss for a second. One is our gold sponsor, which is Washington Community College. And in the back, we have a little table in the back there. There are some brochures from Washington Community College and their digital marketing uh, certificate programs. So if you're interested in, uh, in kind of furthering your education, please take a look at this. They, they're big supporters of LA2M, and we really appreciate that. We don't, we don't exist without help with organizations like this. Also, as a part of our sponsorship package, each month we have a monthly sponsor who has the opportunity to get up at each, each meeting and, uh, and talk a little bit about who they are and what they do and what they want. And, uh, and we're very fortunate for this month of September and for the next month we have, uh, we have Bud Gibson's uh, Search Marketing Workshop as our sponsor uh, for the month. So I'm going to ask Bud just to say a few words here and then I'll talk a little bit more. Well, I appreciate it. it's called the Bud Gibson Search Marketing Workshop. It's actually Eastern Michigan University's Search Marketing Workshop. Uh, this is our fourth annual workshop. Um, we are looking to bring you a great show uh, if you're trying to understand digital strategy, execution, and measurement. We have some of the top people in the area who will be coming. Mary Hennigy, Director of Social Media and Digital Communications for General Motors will be our opening keynote. Chad Wiebesick of Pure Michigan is actually going to do our closing fireside chat. Um, lots of interaction. We'll have 20 speakers on panels in between, uh, uh, representing companies such as Cadillac, and Vision of GM, iProspect, uh, Airfoil. Um, 30 bucks get you breakfast, lunch, and all of those speaker sessions. We'd love to have you Friday, November 7th, 8 to 2 p.m. We've sold over half the tickets. So if you're interested, please sign up quickly. Thanks, and I'll be honest with you, the Bud Gibson search marketing workshop sounds a lot more sexy, so. <laughs> Sorry about that, so the Eastern Michigan University search marketing workshop. Um, I have bought my ticket, it is a phenomenal workshop. I attended last year, and, uh, and trust me, the value for what you get is incredible. Just in the food alone. They serve you breakfast and lunch, and trust me, it's, it's a full breakfast and lunch, so even if you just go for the food, but uh, the, speakers, the speakers are phenomenal, and you will uh, you will not be sorry to go there. So thank you, Bud, for being our sponsor here. Um, if you are interested 
If you or your company is interested in, in sponsoring LHO, we have slots open. We actually have November's uh, slot open if, you, if you'd like to. We can register you today. We can do it. We have on, on the back again our little sponsorship cards. If you're interested, please fill one of those out and give it to myself or Mary Lou or Derek or Jordan in the back and, and talk to one of us. We'll be happy to get you set up. Derek said we'd love to talk about LHO and share it. On your table are little business cards. Take a couple and put them in your pockets. And people, if, if you come back here a lot, share it with somebody. Have a colleague come with you. This is the best way that we're going to have this place full every week, and we're going to continue to offer great programs for you. So thanks for coming. Thank you to our sponsors, and we really appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Great. So uh, just so you know, if you ever can't make it, we do live stream these videos. So we have people watching from around the world, and thanks to Roger for recording them. And we also archive them on the website. So if you miss something, and believe me, if you want to learn about any topic, just go to our website. They're all there, and uh, that's wonderful. So Roger, who also runs the A2 video group, is, does our video. And uh, Carter does our photography, as you can see. But anyways, all right, I digress. So just to give you an idea of format, our speaker's going to talk for approximately 30 minutes. There may be some time for Q&A. And at 1245, you will get a chance to introduce yourself, and we stand up and briefly introduce ourselves. And then we always finish the meeting by 1 o'clock. Um, we do have live tweeting. So Allison is live tweeting for us in the back. So follow along at LA2M on Twitter. Uh, feel free to tweet some of the brilliant things that our speaker says. Use the hashtag LA2M. And we will retweet you, and it'll help your cloud score. Does everyone have a cloud score? Ever work on your cloud score? Okay, good, that's really important. You learn about that too if you go to the Bud Gibson Search Marketing Conference at Eastern Michigan University <laughs> because uh, they talk about cool things like that with Chad Weavis and Fireside Chen. So, without further ado, um, today's speaker is talking about trade shows. Does anyone do trade shows in here? Some of you? Some of you have attended trade shows? We all, I think we're gonna learn some great lessons. So, uh, Ryan Bowers is a longtime friend of mine. I know her from through Inform Michigan, which is a group we both belong to. Uh, it's a large women's business organization. I know my guy, but I'm still involved and she's great. <laughs> and, uh, but she's the marketing person at a company called McGraw Wentworth, which does HR and benefits packages for corporations. And uh, they do great work. So let's give Ryan Bowers a warm round of applause. Okay, can everybody hear me? Okay, great. Um, so as Derek said, we met through Inform, and he does stand out in a crowd. He is tall, and he is one of the few male uh, attendees at the Inform, but I encourage you to give that group a try, which is a women's um, business development group. So I'm here to talk uh, about trade shows today because it's kind of an old school way of developing business. And I think in part it's been crowded out a little bit by the new school of new technology, targeted media. But what it comes back to is that personal touch. How you get that personal interaction and how can your other media channels support that. Um, this is a very uh, streamlined presentation. I take questions at any time. So uh, you know, feel free. So let me explain the picture. <laughs> I was here a few weeks ago for the Color Vibe run. Did anybody else do it? It was at Briarwood Wall. It was very, it was a lot of fun. I actually accidentally parked right next to Derek and it was so out of context I didn't recognize him originally. And I, <laughs> forgive me for that. But I was there. I was the only parent that got sucked into bringing my daughter and her two gymnastics teammates to the event. And the only way to stand out at an event full of that much color and that many people is to stand on your head. So the girls stood on their head. Now I'm not going to stand on the head today, and I don't anticipate anybody else will at trade shows, but it kind of made my point, is how do you stand out in a crowded market? So a couple things. This is just a brief agenda. I'll talk about your goals when you're entering into a trade show event, uh, how to reach your audience before, during, and after those events, and then also some unique tactics that we've employed at mcgraw wentworth and I've employed throughout my career. So a couple of, before entering into a trade show, you really need to contemplate and understand your goals. 
What are you hoping to accomplish? Are you hoping to walk away that day with a new sale or two or three? Are you looking for client retention, client exposure? Uh, what about brand awareness? All of those things we need to, need to be taken into consideration when evaluating the ROI on your event. And there's really no right or good number for that ROI. You have to look at the cost and what's palatable to you. For our firm, we don't anticipate walking away with a sale from any event. We walk in with several um, goals in mind. One is to build relationships and continue relationships with strong prospects, and the other is to really keep that brand awareness in front of our clients, because as an employee group benefits broker, we don't have as much face time with our clients on a routine basis. So this face time with our audience is invaluable. The other value of it is, is if you've built your relationship with your prospects over time, you are a good reminder and a good visible trigger. I've had more than one person walk up to us in an event and say, oh my gosh, I've been meaning to call you. We need to sit down, we need to meet, I need a new broker. So recognizing that, that's a huge value that we walk away with. Um, so, but some of the ways that you can measure the ROI for your event, if it is important to you and, and, and to your leadership in that context, you can look at cost per sale. We look at cost per contact. So how many people did we know going in? How many people did we meet coming out? Um, is an event worth it to you for an exhibit booth of $1,000 and you know 100 people you know, out of the 500 attendees? Is that worth it to you? To us, it does. The other thing to keep in mind as well is managing expectations. I have spoken with several of my peers where their leadership is frustrated because, again, they haven't walked away that day with a sale. You have to recognize that this is a building block. Um, it's an opportunity, an introduction. It's another reminder. And so if you can manage those expectations going in, I think everybody will be a little more satisfied with the results coming out. So reaching your audience. Um, I think one of the biggest things that people forget is to tell your clients. Tell your existing clients that you're going to be at this event. Number one, they are some of your best ambassadors. We have had several circumstances where they will bring, the conference is a networking opportunity for them as much as it is for you. We've had several circumstances where Jane will bring her peer along with her and say, Jill, you need to talk to McGraw Lumber. They can solve your problem. So not only have we gotten right in front of our prospect, we've gotten a validation from their experienced peer, and we've gotten a new relationship built right on the spot. The other thing it helps with is client retention. Our clients have come to expect to see us at several events throughout the year. Um, we're there, our competitors may or may not be, but at least they know we're there. And the way we uh, help do, in that goal is we alert them ahead of time. We'll send emails out to our prospects as well as to our clients. Um, before moving on, I forgot one slide here, and that was to also tell your employees. Tell your employees ahead of time before going to the event. Let them know so that they pass the word along to their clients. Let them know so that they're not surprised. And they say, oh, I hear McGraw Lambert's going to be at this event next week. Oh, I don't know anything about it. It doesn't do your brand any good, it doesn't do the success of your event any good, and it undermines some of the relationship and impression with your existing um, client base. So one of the frustrations that I often hear from people is getting a hold of who's attending, getting a copy of the pre-event registration list. Often it's available to sponsors only, so one thing you may want to consider, when you are entering an event, look at the sponsorship opportunities. Will a booth or exhibit booth roll up into that cost? Um, sometimes that list is worth the added $500. Um, it might be worth, you know, the added you know, six, $700 to you. And that's usually because the, pre, the, the exhibitors or the sponsors, excuse me, the sponsors are the only ones that might get the pre-event um, attendee list. Oftentimes, the exhibitors will get the pre-event uh, registration list, but then the challenge that they have 
is it doesn't come with emails. So I'll get to that, how we address that challenge in just a minute. Get your post-event registration list. As an exhibitor, in your exhibit package, you should be receiving a list of the attendees after the event. And I will tell you, most event coordinators will forget to do this. They'll be busy, they'll be moving on to their next event, or they are not a professional event manager, so they're going to be going on to their next business at hand. Be sure to ask, be sure to pursue, grab hold of it. After that, be careful what you do with it. Don't use it to send generic emails. Um, for example, thank you for stopping by my booth. I, I intentionally, at the conferences that I attend, I intentionally don't put my business card in anybody's fishbowl. I go around, I visit. As an exhibitor and a sponsor, I ethically, ethically don't feel comfortable being entered in for a prize. So that's me, that's my personal ethics. But also, I kind of find it interesting after the event to find out if what the exhibitors are doing. And they'll send me a note saying, thanks for stopping by our booth. It was great talking to you. Like, How do you know I did? They're all running the same email based on the same post-event registration list. So before sending anything out after an event, consider this. Send a targeted email to the people whose names you got from the business card that you actually spoke with. A targeted email that you got from the fishbowl. And say thank you for coming. For everybody else, just say I hope you enjoyed the event. I hope we connected, or you know, if we didn't have an opportunity to connect in person, here's some information. So just recognize that at least some marketing geeks in the world are paying attention to the nuances. <laughs> Track event attendance. Um, and this kind of goes back to the pre-event registration list question. I, uh, mcgraw wentworth exhibits, I want to think about six events a year, six or seven events. And amongst those events, there are some organizations that adamantly will not share their list, ever. It is their commitment to their membership, they will not share their lists. Very frustrating <laughs> as an exhibitor and a sponsor, but I understand it. But some of those events, they are granting awards, and they publish the list of the companies that won awards. So you already know who those organizations are. If they match up in your prospect database, then you have an opportunity to reach out to those process that list ahead of time and let them know you're coming. Um, you have to use creative ways. The other thing I would recommend is, let's say um, you're going to an HR event that's statewide, and you want to encourage people from the local HR chapters to come. If you've been at a local HR chapter event, have the list from the local HR chapter, but you don't have one for the national, you know, the statewide, use the one you have. Leverage what you've already have. Leverage what the people you've already met. Keep your track of the lists that you have used year, you know, of the events that you have attended in 2012, 2013, 2014. Those attendees are most likely going to come back again in 2015, 2016. Use those previous lists that you have received or have gotten a hold of and say, I know you've attended the SHRM event in the past. We're coming up to the national SHRM event. We're going to be there. I hope you'll be there. If you are, stop by our booth. So again, there's, you know, there isn't, uh, there hasn't changed a lot on the email marketing side of trade show marketing, but I think people are more protective about their information, less, you know, less likely to put their email address in. Some organizations are less likely to share the list. Don't let that, you know, stop you. You have older lists. Consider using them. So now I'm going a little bit more into the booth locations and some of those tactics. Um, has anybody ever been asked where you want to put your booth? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you can get in early on registration and as, as, as an exhibitor, you often have an opportunity to choose your location. Go for it. Some people like to be located near the food, the buffet. You can chat them up in the buffet line. I've done that. Um, you can uh, be located near the registration desk, near the entertainment 
really consider where are you going to be put and avoid being put there. See if you can actually select your location. Um, seven years ago, I've been, the, I've been in this position for eight years. Seven years ago, I went to a conference and I talked to the conference coordinator and I said, George, do you realize that you've located three competitors' booths right next to each other? And he had no idea, because he didn't know what they did. And you make your exhibitor coordinator look great when you give them some inside intel. And you look great, you get the halo glow with him, and so he will think about you when some freebie comes along or an additional exposure opportunity comes along. I have a great relationship with George. We watch each other's backs now. Um, so again, it doesn't hurt to tell them. They might not be able to do anything about it. Either somebody pre-chose pre that spot or um, they've just run out of spots. But it never hurts to ask or tell. Arrive early and, and if you can, set up the night before an event. Um, there's a couple events that we go to where there's no they don't pre-publish the booth, the exhibitor booth locations. So when you get there, if you don't like your booth location, just ask. You can switch it on the fly. I also like to go early because I'm not rubbing elbows or knocking elbows, knocking boxes, knocking equipment with our fellow exhibitors. Now you might not want to put your premiums there. You might want to keep things locked up for the night. But if you can get your skeleton up, you're better off and you've got like another half hour sleep leading out the competition. Okay, this is a trick question. Where do you sit at your booth? You don't. There you go. <laughs> there are so many people who do, and you really differentiate yourselves by not sitting at all during the prime networking periods. It's not to say you can't have a chair, but tuck it over to the corner. And it's, um, it's something you have to remind people. I was at an event a couple years ago where the buffet line was set up right in front of us, and I didn't sit down. I went and chatted the people who had to wait for food. What else are they going to do? Um, they were right in front of our booth. I talked to them. People of two, three, four booths over, all the exhibitors were sitting and eating lunch in their booths. So, you know, take a look around, take an opportunity to stand out. Um, this is something that I think we all fall into a rut. Um, is insofar as opening up your space. You have a traditional booth space of 10 by 10. And additionally, everybody puts their table right up front. They got all their tchotchkes, they got all their brochures, everything's right up front. And then you're all standing behind the table, sorry. <laughs> um, you're all standing behind the table. I think there's a couple challenges with that. Number one, you're putting a barrier between you and your customers. Why does the table have to be in front? Why not swing it around to the side? Why not put it in the back? Why not put it on an angle? Why not get rid of it? If you don't need the booth, or excuse me, if you don't need the table, don't keep the table. Um, but if you can get it out of the way, it opens up a hundred square, yeah, 10 by 10, 100. Is that right? <laughs> I'm sorry, marketing, not bad. 100 square foot space that you can welcome people in. In trade shows, and there have been some really tight ones, you have got a flow walking past you. And it gets uncomfortable to stop and talk because you are blocking traffic. And if you've got the table barrier there, you're forcing people to block traffic. If you get the table out of the way and you welcome them into your space and you coax them in to talk, they're going to get into more of a conversation with you. You're going to learn more, they're going to learn more about you. <coughs> this is fun. This is where my true marketing geekiness comes out. Um, themes of events. So if you're at a professional conference, um, my SHRM, which is the Michigan State, uh, the Michigan Society of HR Managers, has a conference every year. <coughs> last, last year was 80s. It was an 80s theme. Some people really rolled with it, which was great. There was one exhibit booth that had a little snare drum and the 
Booth crew was wearing their whole 80s hair and their headbands and their, the, the leg warmers, and it was an interesting look. Um, we didn't go that far. Um, number one, my team would have killed me. Um, and number two, it, you don't want to alienate your clients. So, but one of the things that we did, um, we tied in with the theme of the event, and one of the big things from the 80s, and I apologize, I'm dating myself, but one of the big uh, things from the 80s were Wayfarers, Ray-Bans, colored sunglasses. I don't remember them, but apparently they folded up. Um, so we handed out fold up sunglasses. Colorful, inexpensive, <coughs> stood out from the crowd, tied in with the theme. Conference loved us because we got into it. And I'll talk a little bit about it later because I did tie this in with Twitter and LinkedIn and social media. <coughs> Um, the MySherm conference that's coming up, and please don't tweet this because I don't want I don't want my competitors taking the idea. But the MySherm conference coming up in Detroit in a couple of weeks is HR Amplified. We are giving away amplifiers for your iPhones, earbuds, and the big raffle giveaway are Beats headphones. Um, two pairs <laughs> on sale at Amazon. <laughs> So um, what we've done is just try and, and play off the theme a little bit. And again, you get the goodwill of the conference coordinators and you get the attention of the conference coordinators. And it's a little different. It stands out from what your peers are doing. Same thing with the raffle, the, ear, um, the beads. It doesn't have to be super expensive. We're going to a wellness conference in a couple weeks. Um, one of the big things with wellness these days is um, infused water bottles, fruit infused water bottles. So we're doing, we're giving away glass pitchers that can fruit infused glass pitchers with lemons, 30 bucks. But again, they're visible on the table, they're unique, they stand out, and it's a chance for you, again, to acknowledge the audience that you're there with and acknowledge the intent of the event. So this, this is getting into the heart of Ann Arbor and social media and um, so trade shows, like I said, are kind of old school, but they really bring the personal interaction that we are seeking to layer on to the social interaction that we have. So, you know, when I talked to Derek about this and I talked to Mary Lou, Mary Lou said, make sure, you know, social media is part of this, right? Absolutely. Um, my target audience is HR community, and the HR community has really engaged with LinkedIn. They love LinkedIn, in part for recruiting, but it's for sharing concepts and ideas. They've also gotten onto Twitter. I'll admit, Facebook scares them. There's a whole lot of HR risks with Facebook, as, as many of us are familiar with. So, Facebook we don't use too much. Instagram, um, some booth exhibitors are using, particularly if it's ties in well with your product and your service, we don't use it. And I'll be honest, we don't use it because um, I don't have enough content to keep that going and make it viable. I am on it. Uh, I, have, I have twin teenagers, so I have to be on all social media. Um, but how do we do this? So with LinkedIn, if you, hopefully you have a company page. If you have a company page for your organization, that's a great way to post activity. So we always post a notice at least a week beforehand. We're going to be at this event. Looking forward to seeing you. Proud to sponsor. Providing a speaker. Um, and I'll show you. We, we give away a Keurig at one event. So it's, you know, stop by our booth and find out what's brewing at mcgraw Wentworth, what's percolating and benefits. Sorry, it's dorky. <laughs> um, we post on LinkedIn before the event. We post on LinkedIn the day before the event. We post on LinkedIn after the event, um, letting people know. And we're also getting the followers. We also cross-market on LinkedIn with the event conference itself. <coughs> Same thing for Twitter. Um, I, you know, it depends on the conference or trade show that you're going to. A lot of them are using Twitter. A lot of them are not. Some will have a hashtag designated, some will not. Stand out from the crowd. If you've got the followers, go for it. 
you know, a week before the event, set up, you know, start promoting it, use the hashtag, use the event um, Twitter handle, and let people know you're going to be there. This is one way to bring in your social channel and bring it in and tie it in with your personal channel. Um, we have, uh, and I'll, I'll show you a couple examples of the tweets that we've done. Um, we also use TweetDeck or Hootsuite or whatever else. We'll schedule tweets throughout the day, so even if we don't have wireless access, we have an opportunity to use the scheduled tweets. Same thing with Facebook. Um, I'm given this savvy crowd, I'm sure you probably all know you can schedule posts on Facebook now. LinkedIn isn't there yet, it's breaking my heart, but um, uh, hopefully they'll be there soon. But, um, so we'll, I will schedule tweets uh, throughout the day to, as well as Facebook posts. Um, I confess, I don't make it to every trade show. I have a team that goes, um, and they are not Twitter savvy. So I will touch base with them, and I'll ask them what's going on today, how's the traffic, who are you seeing, send some pictures. They do have smartphones, so they'll send me pictures, and I'll tweet those on behalf of the company. Um, you can't see it very well, and I apologize. That's my fault for not reading the rules close enough. But this was our LinkedIn post uh, for an ASC conference that was earlier this year. And the question is, is what's percolating at McGraw-Wentworth? Stop by our booth for the latest benefits news for an update on our growing organization and enter to win a personal Keurig. Keurig was one of the most popular giveaways we've ever given. Ever. I'm worried about burning that out. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with the beats. <laughs> um, this particular event, so reading the Twitter feed from the bottom up, find out what's percolating at McGraw when we're stop by our booth. It's a great day to get the latest benefits trends, stop by our booth, and we hashtagged it because this event didn't have a hashtag, so we started it. And then when we had the winner, we asked her, can we take your picture? Can we tweet it out? She said, sure. Why not? Um, another one, this, go, this ties back to the Mytrum conference of last year, which was the 80s. Um, so we took the opportunity to tell people our team is at booth 60 or 55. Stop by, learn what we're doing. That one we gave home and I gave away an iHome audio because again, 80s music. We play, we had an iPad there. We were playing 80s music to tell you. And then everybody that stopped by our booth and got sunglasses, we asked them, "Can we take a picture? Can we tweet it?" We got a ton of feed, positive feedback from our prospects and clients that came. Um, we got shout outs from people unprompted. Um, we had people come by our booth asking for our giveaways. Um, so I, there were a couple other things I, I wanted to add on to this. Um, number one, on your giveaways, how's, how many people here have experienced the locusts that descend on trade shows? <laughs> Okay, they just come through, sweep up all your goodies, don't look you in the eye, and they're moving on. Who says you have to put all your goodies out at once? Why do you have to do that? Nobody. Why not? We've learned that if you dole them out, parse them out throughout the day, different goodies, different time of the day, people will come back. And suddenly they're walking by and they see your table and their eyes are down and suddenly they've got a new treat to look for. And then you have had two or three opportunities to coax them in to talk to you instead of that one locust flyby. <laughs> We've all experienced it. We actually figured this one out by accident and it's worked very well for us. And the other thing that it does is their peers are going, oh, where'd you get that really cool treat? You know, that little cool treat. You know, my bra went worth, come on by. Um, a couple other things too, we had, uh, does anybody know what this is? It's hard to see. Um, it actually was written up in Detroit Free Press a couple months ago, so I was very excited because we, we've had these around for a couple years. These are silicone amplifiers for your iPhone. Take your iPhone out of your security case if you can carry one, put it in here. Old school amplifier, trust me, it works. Amplifies your sound. 
What that did, people walked by their desks, and walked by our table and didn't know what it was. They stopped. They're like, what the hell is that? It's a new business card holder, what is it? And so again, it's, it's an un unusual way to get this foot traffic to stop. Now, I don't like using gimmicks to stop people. I don't like investing in giveaways. That's not the most fun thing to do. Um, but we, you know, I'm very frugal. Um, we do different things, uh, you know, pens, note, you know, post-its, kind of some of the traditional. But you do find that a distinctive giveaway, a distinctive raffle present really does pay off. And it doesn't have to cost a lot. You're already there investing in the exhibit booth. You're already there investing in the labor. Um, so I understand it's a big investment on your end. And it's a big investment on our end as well. So we try and make the most of it. Um, and then the one other tidbit I wanted to share, and this is something that I see, uh, two other tidbits. Um, going back to Twitter. Um, don't take a picture of an empty booth and tweet that and say, come visit my booth. <laughs> I don't know who I'm visiting. I don't know, it doesn't look rock star sexy. It doesn't look like a lot of fun. Ask the person next to you to take your picture. Offer to reciprocate. That picture of people in your booth is much more engaging and much more attractive. Um, and then the last thing is, is be careful who you staff your booth with. Who are you staffing your booth with? The interns, or the low man on the totem pole. Why isn't your sales person there? Why isn't your salesperson's name on the invite to say, stop by my booth? Why is it considered a scut job? It doesn't have to be. It can be a lot of fun. You get a chance to interact with a lot of your peers. They get used to seeing you. They get used to coming to look for you. Um, and I think part of the problem is, is you've made that full investment, and then you put the wrong ambassador in your booth. And that's what they should be. They should be an ambassador for you, for your brand. It's hard, it's a lot of, a lot of work, it's tiring. The, the ambassador is invested in the success of your investment, not somebody who just got the scut job. They're the ones sitting on the chair with their iPhone, ignoring the foot traffic. So, um, I'm open to any questions. I have. Uh, I brought examples of goodies um, that we do give away. And the one thing I did bring is a handout. There was a peer of mine last year who handed out um, a list of do's and don'ts for trade shows. And she delved a little bit deeper than what I hit on the high points here. But feel free, it's helpful information. So who has questions? I have a microphone here and I'll come by. Thanks, Sarah. Um, you must have done a really good job today because I've got at least four questions okay. I had to cross off. And they, I didn't give them any of them. <laughs> no, no, I'm not a show. Okay. Um, two questions. Uh, as far as giveaways, do you ever get special giveaway items uniquely and only for your clients whom you've invited and said, stop by our booth, and if they come by, they get the really nice thing? Or? Yes. Okay. We do have some tuckies. We have some things tucked away. Um, uh, nice travel mugs, uh, travel coffee mugs. There are some higher value items that we do come with, and we, we keep those in the back. What is your best opening question? I know, don't ask anything that can be answered with yes or no, but if I happen to come by and you want to talk to me, what do you find as a real good engaging question to, to grab me? Well, you have to understand, um, you know, we're talking to an HR audience. So some of the things that we will ask them is, uh, we might ask them something specific to the event. You know, what did you think of this speaker? I felt he was really engaging. Or um, how's open enrollment going? I know this is open enrollment period for you. How's it going? So we kind of do something that's unrelated and then kind of draw them in. Um, because again, we've been building relationships with our audience and have gotten familiar with them. We even print out a copy of the registration list and kind of keep it in the back and take notes as to who we bumped into, who we saw. Um, 
But that's usually kind of where we go first. We don't go with the sales message first. Um, do they still do, which I wasn't crazy about how they used to do that, is people would come around to your booth just to get a star or a mark on their card from you, and they had no intention of talking to you. Yeah. Hopefully they've stopped doing that. So the bingo cards um, are a challenge. There are some organizations that still do the bingo cards or you know, um, fill in 10 spaces and enter to win the conference-wide raffle. Yes, they are going to come. But what I what we try and do is we look them in the eye. How are you doing? What you know? What are you interested in today? They have to stay in there long enough for me to initiate, and I'm going to draw it out as long as I possibly can. Um, one of the things that the MyShrim conference did last year that you know the conferences are doing their best to force traffic flow through your trade show. Um, so if, if it's exhibitors in addition to a con speaker's conference, that's the challenge for the exhibitors. And they, they're trying different things, and one of it is location. Um, one of the things that MySherm did last year, with mixed success, but I had fun with, was um, 80s trivia. Fill in the trivia form. And so with Twitter, you know, I said, you know, we just tweeted out throughout the day finish the lyric, I wear my sunglasses at night. Or, for better hallway vision, quick, name the movie. What did you say? Breakfast Club. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> I feel really old. <laughs> yes, for better hallway vision. Um, so we just, we made fun, we had some fun with it. I didn't, I didn't mean to say we made fun of it. We had fun with it. So, you know, it kind of, for the people who were following us on Twitter, they came by and it gave us a conversation point. Um, but unfortunately, it, if it's not a true trade show, if it's an exhibitor's tacked on to an educational conference, they're working really hard to try and pull you through. So, but it's up to the exhibitor too. I hear uh, a lot of venting from exhibitors about how nobody's coming by their booth, nobody's doing anything to bring me traffic. What are you doing? Did you tell people you were there? Did you have a really cool, you know, um, did you alert them ahead of time? Did you tell your clients ahead of time? Because at a minimum, if you tell your clients ahead of time, your clients are going to stop by your car. <coughs> and then hopefully they'll bring some people with you. Yes, back there. So obviously you never put the table in front so you don't block traffic and let everybody know what's the if there's the one takeaway from today that I should remember about my booth, what, what would it be? What's the one thing that I should not do? One of the one things you should do not do. Um, shouldn't be on your phone. Should not be on your phone. Well, then how do you tweet? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, tweet deck. I mean, you, you know, hopefully, again, it's it's those two different trade shows um, experiences. If if there's any ebb and flow, certainly take the opportunity to send out that tweet. Set them up on tweet deck ahead of time. You know, they can usually be generic enough that if you time them out on tweet deck, they'll go out on your behalf or Hootsuite or or whatever other tools, um, HubSpot, I imagine, or something does that. Um, but uh, yeah, the phones, the phones. Everybody's. There's a TV show coming out I really want to see, where it's a, about a guy, the guy from Harold and Kumar, teaching a woman how to interact and bring her phone face up Selfie. and talk. <laughs> Selfie. Thank you. I really want to see this show. So it's a good one, I think, for my teenagers. So we probably shouldn't sit in the booth and eat our cheeseburger either. No, no, no. I, you know, go hungry. Go hide in the corner. Go hide behind the booth. <laughs> All right, okay. We have time. One more question. Am I got one? Okay. Thank, thank you, Ryan, for, for the information. But so we, we, last week we heard from the uh, from Briarwood Mall about the kiosk workers who tend to float out and kind of grab you and kind of almost you feel like you're going down a gauntlet. And a lot of times at trade shows, you'll feel like you're going down that narrow aisle. Yeah. And it's kind of a gauntlet because they start to come out. And I know you talked about removing the table, but sometimes the table is a barrier to <coughs> keep those people because there are some people who are kind of unethical and they like to try to grab you to pull you into their booth. 
Can you talk about that and maybe ways to, to appropriately do that and not do that? Wow. Um, floaters. Okay. Don't use rope for one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you talked about people in line, but they're there, they're kind of a passive audience right yeah. in front of you, and that's understandable. Yeah. But there are people who venture down the hall to, like, kind of get people Poach. To come. Yeah. Ah, poachers. Poachers versus floaters. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, yeah, the poachers. You know, I think. Keep in mind, part of the reason why they're coming down your way is because they're jealous because you got the traffic. Um, but as an attendee? Yeah, oh, as an attendee? Okay. So, uh, you know, that's, you've kind of stumped me with that one. So as an attendee, you're struggling with saying thank you, but no thank you. Did I win something? Did I win something? <laughs> well, uh, I got earbuds, I got three kinds of amplifiers. I'm not selling, I'm just, these are just demos. Um, but yes, you can have <laughs> one. Here we go. I have um, the newest, the, you stumped me, and then the newest thing that I'm trying, and again, I work with an older generation of people, so um, they're like, what is this? And this is for the back of your iPhone, your smartphone, your little wallet pocket, you know, so you, put it right on the back. And what I like about it is when it's going to be at our table, my business card can go right in it. So I don't have to give you my business card. I can give you a giveaway. Um, so what is it? It's a, it's, it's a silicone wallet that goes on the back oh. of your phone. Um, and whether you use it or your teenagers use it, your name is walking around somebody's <laughs> office or house. Um, so. I, I hope you found this useful. I am on LinkedIn. I have my business cards. I am on Twitter. I, I personally don't tweet that much uh, because I'm, I try and let the company speak for itself or me speak for the company. Um, but feel free to reach out anytime and I post all the time as to where I am. Um, and same thing with McGraw Walmart. So thank you. That's your room. Wonderful talk, Robin. Wonderful talk. Um, yeah, I find that sometimes giveaways that are, I can take for my kids, I take more often than ones for myself because I feel like I have too much stuff. But it's nice to bring some home for the kids. So I should bring this home to my daughter and she shall amplify her phone. <laughs> and be very grateful and someday become a McGraw Wimbley. That's building equity in the future, right? <laughs> Started young. But a great talk. Tons of good pointers. We've got some good pointers in there. I mean, there was, it was just great. So uh, I think we're all going to have more effective trade shows. Thank you. So that was, I love these good talks. I mean, I love a talk where I learn something. So thank you. And trade show exhibiting is not easy. So I think these, these will help you. Um, all right, so now we do the introduction part. And we went two minutes long just because there were some good questions and also because I feel like we can get around the room in 12 minutes. Can we do it, folks? Yep. Yeah. We can do it. If you're feeling long winded, you can talk to someone afterwards. I'm just joking. All right. So we, we do introductions now. We stand up. You uh, give us your name, what you do, and then pass the mic to your buddy. And if you want need to say something quickly, you can say it like I'm, I'm hiring someone, or I, I just you know had a baby, whatever you want to say. I don't care. But, and then pass the mic, and we'll get all the way around the room in 12 minutes. We're going to start up here with Mr. Bruce. I do ask that you stand up when you speak. Thank you. I'm Bruce from Rubber Scientific, and I do trade shows, and I have about a dozen shows a year. Good morning, Dr. Rob Moore, Moore Family Chiropractic in private practice, downtown Saline. Uh, we work very hard at making your experience exceptional, effective, and convenient. Uh, hi, my name is Mara Sankis. I am shadowing Lindsay, the CEO from 3.7 Web Designs. I'm <laughs> Uh, I'm Zach Palmer. I'm a freshman at U of M Dearborn, majoring in communication studies, and I'm currently working for Roush. I'm Drew Markham, an uh, MBA student at Eastern Michigan University, and I'm helping book in a search marketing workshop. And I'm Bud Gibson. I created the search marketing program at Eastern Michigan University. And if I'm not wrong, I think the last three people who just presented themselves are going to the workshop. I mean, remember your name uh, from the attendee list. So uh, that's why we're filling up, and uh, we certainly would like to have you too. Good afternoon. My name is Jill Davis. I am uh, a 
a marketing specialist. I moved here in 2000 from Buffalo, New York, and what I do is I help businesses build awareness, um, customer retention, through exposure, internet, and uh, I came here to share and to network and to meet some fabulous people. Welcome. <laughs> hey, I'm Jeff with Steve's Custom Signs. Um, I am here for networking and to learn about trade shows. We we go to trade shows ourselves, and we also um, provide some of the like trade show giveaways and displays and stuff. Um, so if you're going to a trade show, you need some stuff to give away. We've got some great ideas. Hi. Hi, I'm Emily Boney, um, and I'm a recent MSC grad. And I'm interested in learning more about marketing as kind of a career. So thanks for having me. I'm interested. <laughs> Welcome, Kristen. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Lila Gislason, and I am actually a trade show marketing consultant. So I help companies navigate the wild world of trade show marketing and uh, help to make their endeavors more effective. Hello, I'm Stacy from Valley Valley, your local digital print shop, and I'm sure Ryan said a hundred times during that presentation that you need your business cards and your brochures at the trade show, so you can find me for that. And number two, um, I'm also on the board of WXW, and our big um, fall forum is coming up yeah, protect them, um, in October 16th, so make sure you sign up for that. It's a great day. Um, usually it's mostly all women, but great speakers, great lunch, all that. Hi everybody, my name is Jim Musio. I have my own company. <laughs> I give away money. Um, I don't know where that came from, so here's the thing. Um, it's a lucky quarter. Um, that's all I got. <laughs> so I, I, do, uh, I do web and mobile development uh, consulting, so if you or your organization needs help with uh, optimization of your website, I would love to talk to you about it, so thank you. Hello, my name is Dan Lee. I'm working as an intern at Ingenix Social Marketing. Good afternoon, Tom Gallagher. I'm a sales and business development specialist, currently seeking a position with a mid-sized Michigan company. Hello, everyone. I'm Jordan Bruce. I'm the intern working in the booth back here, like you're not supposed to do. <laughs> um, I'm a business student at Eastern Michigan University and also interning with uh, Derek at Ingenix. Hello, I'm Greg Mott, I'm a client of McGraw Whitworth, and I love McGraw Whitworth, they're awesome, so it's really good to learn about the uh, tuckaways, so they see you in my <laughs> <laughs> uh, Also, I'm yeah, board president for a local nonprofit, uh, Michigan Ability Partners, we work with veterans and people with disabilities, and we help them become self-sufficient. Basically what that means is we help over a thousand people annually get off the streets and get into affordable housing and substance abuse and all sorts of problems. And, we need to spread our awareness, so I'm looking for a potential marketer who can help and join our board. So if you're interested in helping the community, please talk to me. Thanks. Hi, my name is Conroy. I'm a digital marketing consultant. I uh, do pay-per-click advertising and social media campaigns. I, um, I'm an Eastern alum. I went through Bud's program. I did my undergrad research with him. And, um, yeah, so if you want to talk about anything you do for marketing or you want to set up your Hootsuite to uh, pre-plan out your tweets um, for uh, uh, the, your next trade show, come and talk to me. And uh, otherwise, if you're going to the uh, search marketing workshop, I'll see you there. Thanks. Hi, my name is David Coleman. I work in Brand New. What we do is monitor prices and presentation online for brands and retailers. Hi, I'm Tasha Moore with Martopia, and we offer a trade show distinction program that leverages marketing, public relations, and social media before, during, and after trade shows to help companies get the most out of their investments. Hi, I'm Allison Moore. I'm a junior marketing strategist at Ingenics. So how much of the 12 minutes do I have left? <laughs> uh, no, I'm Dennis Hoffman. Um, the easy way to remember me is at ABC, Advertising, Branding, Communications. They've come up with a lot of neat words like in transition or between successes. I'm not working. Uh, I am, however, interviewing for a position that's going to require uh, top practices in boothmanship. So I sent them notice that I'm coming to this, thinking they might come too, but I'm just hoping that that will be a little differentiator that might set me apart. I thought it was a great presentation. 
Hi, my name is Greg. I work at a uh, local startup that does health and wellness products. Uh, our sister company, though, Truic, is actually releasing a uh, brain training game soon, and I have cards for it. Uh, it's not out yet, but I'll let you guys know what it is. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashley Bo. I'm the marketing director of Message Box. Um, we're a local startup building a digital platform for event planners. So if you know any planners, you can talk to me. Hi, my name is Brett Borswold. I am currently not in marketing right now, but I'm going to get back into it. And a lot of communities have been coming for years, just not for a while now. So it's good to see you. I'm Roger Rail. Uh, I'm a venture catalyst, so I help with a lot of the networking groups and entrepreneurs in town. And I'm also a chair of a local nonprofit that's uh, dealing with an environmental issue. And I can relate to some of, the, even though it's not trade necessarily, we have booze and getting people in. And uh, there's a, there's some we need to talk a little bit because uh, okay. there's some other pointers that that uh, we can pass on. Very good with la one Thanks everyone for coming out. That was just really very interesting. Things that I'd never thought of before. I, uh, and and I, I hope that you all benefited as much as I did from her talk. Um, and um, I'm the one that, that uh, you would need to talk to if you wanted to make a suggestion about a potential speaker. So if you know someone who would, would be a really good fit for, for our organization, um, someone you'd like to suggest as, as a speaker down the road, we are actually booking speakers now for our January through June. Um, so we've got, we've got a number of availabilities during that time period. Um, but let me know if you have any ideas on that topic and, and uh, thanks again for coming out. Hi, I'm Carter Sherman of Frog Fit Studios and I'm a commercial on the trial and portrait photographer. This uh, covers everything except the wedding. Shoot in some video as well. Pictures I shoot is meeting from the local group's Facebook page, but I'm kind of busy, so I'll be putting up the, today's in the last two weeks, hopefully tomorrow. Thank you, Carter, and thank you everyone for getting around the room. It's three minutes to one, <coughs> which I love that, so thank you for all your contribution to that. Um, yeah, my name is Derek Maravan, I think I told you, but we, we don't do trade shows, but we do help um, with the process of nurturing because as Brian pointed out, once you get leads, then what? And really a lot of people, that's where they drop the ball. And really that follow process and what, you know, what comes next, and then what leads up to it are the kind of things we do through digital marketing. I was back here checking behind the table to see if there's any good tuckies back there. <laughs> I need to get to more trade shows, you know, I forget how fun there. But trade shows are hard work. You know, I really, I give a lot of respect to the people that go to the trade shows. Ryan, said that she's not the one that goes, right? But she's tweeting back from the home base. It's exhausting to work a trade show. It's exhausting. See, one of the tips that we should mention is you gotta exercise, you gotta stay in good shape. Get out and run. Because if you go work a trade show, you're gonna be beat. You know, everyone's like, oh, hey, we're gonna go out and party tonight. No, we're not, we're gonna go home, I'm gonna put my feet up, and we're gonna go to room service because I am just beat. So a lot of respect, props to anyone that does trade shows. I think you're gonna do them better now because that was brilliant. But um, one thing, we do have a November sponsorship open. It's only $250 for the month. That sponsorship gets you access to our 2,000 person email marketing list. Now we don't give it to you, but you do get to put a nice banner on there and you get to, we blast that list uh, four times during that month and that would have your logo on it. Great for lead generation. So if any of you companies out there, maybe you know someone, uh, we need a November sponsor. So, share the LA Tone cards. Mary, I forgot who the speaker is next week. <laughs> Who? Is that anyone? Is that anyone? It's not on my phone. The mobile app's not working. Oh, no. Terrible, right? Sean. Sean. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah. I need a card every week for like a cheat sheet of who's coming. And just a little too much going on. But so Sean Hickey's going to be here next week. And I have no idea what he's talking about, but it's probably good. It's going to be good friends. Right. For complex okay, see? So it's going to be good. Yeah. So Sean runs PWB, which is a marketing firm in town. He's a great speaker. He's kind of a local hero, local celebrity. Um, so that means you'll all be back, God willing, and we'll see you next time. And until then, help others, make money, and have fun, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. See you.